Welcome. In front of me I have the Nothing Phone 2A and today I'll go with unboxing along with a quick look and an overview of this device along with its specs. So in any case, um, let's get in there. Uh, we have the typical Nothing Phone packaging so it means that we need to damage the box to actually get into our device which yoink that off. There we go. Nothing in here, so let's just yeet that to the side. Now we actually have a better packaging inside compared to previous Nothing Phones. So here is our device. And below that we have a cable. Looks pretty nice. So I believe this is like the default Nothing Phone cable. It has a little bit of a plastic and a flare to it with nothing... Yeah, nothing branded on it. If the light, there we go, shines correctly. You can see it. And as you can see, it's a dual Type-C. And we got some paperwork and our SIM inject tool. And that's about it. I'm taking a look at the device itself. There we go. Feels really nice in hand, I have to point that out. Just wait for it to boot up. So let's start off with the display. Um, the display right here is a 6.7 inch display, so the, basically the typical size for a phone, or nowadays at least. It is a 1080p resolution, so 1080 by 2412 pixels. And this is a AMOLED display with 1 billion colors, 120 Hz refresh rate, HDR10 plus certification, and a peak brightness of 1300 nits. So the display right here actually is pretty damn good, considering this is uh, what you could call a budget device from OnePlus. Uh, not OnePlus, but uh, nothing phone. Now, in reality, I'm saying budget compared to like the their other device but this is still about 300 us dollars give or take like 20 bucks so it's still not necessarily you know super cheap but it's a pretty decent you know device for the money i would say specifically with the display being probably one of the best parts of it uh with it basically seeing seeming like most of the price went to the display right here now, um, let's flip it over, and at the back we have a dual camera setup. Thank you for not including garbage cameras that are completely useless. I do like to have less garbage on my device, uh, considering most devices tend to include like 2 megapixel macro or something like that, uh, which absolutely means nothing. It's completely useless, uh, but you know, they're just filling out the number to make it seem like it's a better value because all the phones have three cameras, so we might as well too, even though most phones that have three cameras at like mid-range prices don't actually have triple camera setup they have at best dual camera setup and the rest could be considered a sticker camera here we actually have dual 50 megapixel sensors so one is a wide sensor with f1.9 uh, pdaf and optical image stabilization and then the other 50 megapixel is a f2.2 114 uh, degree ultra wide lens which uh, allows you to record videos on this device with the back cameras at 4K 30 frames or 1080p 60 or 120, though 120 will be slow motion, with uh, gyroscopic electronic image stabilization. Then if we flip it over to the front, we have a hole-punched hole camera, and that is a 32 megapixel f2.2 wide sensor, which allows you to record videos at 1080p 30 frames, which is also pretty decent. Now, Continuing on into the internals of the device, which we can almost see on the back, as you can see it is trans semi-transparent. Keep in mind what you see here is just aesthetics, uh, so this plastic can be removed and you don't actually get to see what's... Uh, this isn't the actual, like, call it insides. This is like a plate that covers the insides because... reasons, I guess? Um, we also don't have lighting by the looks of it. Although I could be wrong about that one, I haven't checked it out. Although, no, I think we actually might have lighting right here around. Uh, but like I said, I haven't checked it out at all, so I could be wrong about it. But anyway, uh, let's continue on. So, 
Inside we have a 5000 mAh battery, so that's pretty decent, with 45 watt charging on a wire, which is also pretty decent, though as you've seen we don't have a provided charger in the box. So that is something that you either have or will need to get to be able to actually charge this device, which is a bit of a shame. I do like when companies do actually include a charger in the box and not make you spend additional additional money. Now OnePlus, uh, why am I saying constantly OnePlus? Uh, nothing phone uh, doesn't actually release their devices that frequently. They only have like, what, three devices as of right now. So uh, excuse of not producing e-waste seems to be at the moment a legitimate purpose, I would say. Uh, but for instance, from someone like um, iPhones or Samsungs, when they say we care about the environment, that's why we don't give a charger in a box, but then yet we produce uh, bazillion devices uh, over the year and uh, produce stupendous amounts of uh, garbage in terms of like the phones itself and also the batteries and all that stuff, then yeah, I don't buy that bullshit. Um, here we only have like three devices that nothing has released so far, so seems pretty legit at the moment. Okay. So, uh, continuing on into the processor inside, we have a Dimensity 7200 Pro. And uh, this device comes either with 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM and either 128, 256 uh, gigabytes of storage. So you have two choices. Now, going over the actual options of storage and RAM that are paired up, we have 128 with 8, 256 with 8, and 256 with 12. Um, now, that being said, I don't think this device has a expendable storage by the looks of the tray being relatively small. And yep, it's just a dual SIM card right here. So if you need more than 128 gigs of storage, which chances are you actually might, uh, then your best option, uh, if you want to save as much money as you possibly can, then that would be the 256 with 8 gigabytes of RAM, which for a device this, uh, like this, 8 gigs of RAM should be sufficient enough. It's not like you're going to be doing some heavy multitasking on here, so you shouldn't run out of RAM. Um, but obviously, if you really want to spec it out, you can go for the 12, uh, and that will be also a viable option. Now, continuing on into the uh, last thing, let's look at the device from all the sides. So it looks like we have a plastic frame. I'm not sure if that is actually correct or not, but by the looks of it, it feels and... Yeah, this is plastic frame. Uh, I can't really see any kind of info about it, but like I said, I believe this is plastic frame. We have our volume rockers on the left side, right over here. And then on the right side, we have our power button. Now this is just a power button. Uh, then at the top, we have our microphone hole. And at the bottom, we have our speaker grills, charging port, microphone, and our dual SIM tray. Now, when it comes down to the uh, fingerprint uh, not being on the power button, that's because it is actually under the display, so you can set it up. And nothing phone actually has a pretty decent, pretty decent under display like fingerprint sensors right there, so should be working pretty reliably. So there we go. That's basically the device. It is a pretty decent budget to mid-range of phone. It doesn't really offer anything like super substantial in terms of performance or anything like that, but it does give you a really good display. And considering you will be staring at this display for the most part, as you don't really do much other than stare at the displays on the phones anyway, um, then this should give you one of the better experience 